today's video, I'll be going over a high yield drug called lithium. In this video, I'll cover the drug interactions, the baseline labs, the labs that are concerning, some of the side effects of lithium, how we can go about managing, and what we should be teaching the patient. Lithium. Lithium is a mood stabilizer, and know that normal therapeutic lithium level is 0.6 to 1.2 milliequivalent per liter. That's very important to know for exam purposes and if you are the provider. A few things to know about lithium. What do we know about lithium? Lithium is a gold standard for treating manic episodes. It's not effective for rapid cyclers or mixed episodes and it does have an anti-suicidal effect. What do I mean by that? So if you have a patient that is with bipolar and is having thoughts of suicide, this is one of the best medications for that. It is a first-line neuroprotective for bipolar. Know that any level that's greater, so like I had mentioned, normal therapeutic level for lithium is 0.6 to 1.2. If the level gets greater than 1.5, know that this increases the risk of lithium toxicity. Know that lithium is metabolized in the kidney, and this is when you're going to be monitoring the kidney functions. You're going to be doing serum creatinine level, um, BUN level. You're going to be monitoring any kidney abnormalities that this patient might be presenting with, like right flank pain, brown urine. Know that you want to avoid lithium in pregnancy. Very important because lithium causes Epstein anomaly, in, uh, especially in first trimester. Some of the drug interactions with lithium. What increases lithium levels? This is going to be your NSAIDs, diuretics, ACE inhibitors, carbamazepine, also known as Tegretol, and Dalantin. I know I mentioned NSAIDs in this um, slide. No the different types of NSAIDs, okay? There is ibuprofen, Tylenol is not an NSAID, aspirin, naproxen. Familiarize yourself with different types of NSAIDs. Know the diuretics. What are diuretics? Familiarize yourself with ACE. ACE inhibitors, ACE inhibitors end with pril, lisinopril, become familiarized with that. These are the drugs that increases lithium levels. So when these drug, there is an increase of lithium level because there is reduced renal clearance of lithium, right? So the kidneys aren't functioning properly. They are not getting rid of the lithium level and that's why it's becoming toxic. So these drugs affect the kidneys and that's why there is an increase of lithium level. If there are drugs that increase lithium levels, know that there are drugs that lower lithium levels as well. So what are they? Sodium bicarb lowers lithium levels. Caffeine, alcohol, because they're diuretics, they definitely decrease your lithium concentration. Pregnancy decreases lithium levels. Why? Because you're increasing the fluid intake in the body. There is too much fluid in the body because you're pregnant. So there is going to be a decrease of lithium. Osmotic and loop diuretics decrease lithium level. So what are the baseline labs that we want to monitor for these patients? Before you start the patient on lithium, you want to make sure the patient's thyroid panels are within normal. Check the serum creatinine level. Check the BUN level. You want to make sure the patient is not pregnant, so you're going to do a pregnancy test. Also, you want to do an EKG, these patients, especially if the patient is over the age of 50. The reason why we do the pregnancy test, like I said before, this is to avoid any lawsuits. If the patient is pregnant, you're putting the patient at risk for Epstein anomaly. The BUN, know your labs, okay? 10 to 20 is BUN, serum creatinine is 0.6 to 1.2, your thyroid panel, your TSH is 0.5 to 5, T4 is 0.7 to 1.9. So for test purposes, they might even ask you about specific gravity, which is related to the kidneys, right? So if I give you a patient that is uh, uh, that is on lithium and I tell you the urine specific gravity is 1.015, are you concerned? What kind of patient education are you going to be doing? You should be telling this patient, stay hydrated. If the patient becomes dehydrated, on lithium that's going to increase the lithium level right and you should know that normal specific gravity is 1 to 1.03 so the specific gravity that I mentioned for the patient is normal labs that are concerning for the patient obviously it's going to be your lithium because you put the patient on lithium level you are going to monitor this patient for lithium once they have taken it for at least five days you're going to do a lab work just to make sure that this is on a therapeutic or maintenance level therapeutic level for this drug is very narrow. You want to make sure they're not going into toxicity. Looking, monitoring for any abnormal thyroid panels. You're going to monitor for leukocytosis. Know that serum creatinine level we said was 0.6 to 1.2, so you're going to keep an eye out on that. 
BUN, you're also going to monitor, which is normal, is uh, what's normal is 10 to 20. You're also going to monitor for any abnormalities in the urine, which is going to be like protein in the urine. They might be ketones. So any protein that's greater than four or ketones greater than four should be a red flag for these patients on lithium. What I want you to take from this slide would be what is common side effect and what are toxic side effects. So the common side effects is going to be weight gain, impaired thyroid functioning, fine hand tremors, fatigue, mental cloudiness, thirst. What is toxic is going to be when you see this patient have confusion, slurred speech, this patient is having seizures or possibly coma. You might want to think, okay, is this patient on lithium toxic, right? This patient might also present with coarse hand tremors, so they're shaking vigorously. They might also have GI upset. This is where the patient is having diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, cramps. You're, are you concerned at this point? Yes, you should be because they're depleting all the fluids, right? And when you're depleting fluids, this puts the uh, patient at increased risk for lithium uh, toxicity in the kidneys. There's also, if, when you do an EKG, if there's T wave inversions, you're going to stop that. Lithium. Lithium management is going to be discontinuing lithium. You're going to treat treat the dehydration, especially when the patient is that toxic, right? You want to dilute that uh, lithium level. You're going to obtain a lithium level, do the renal functions test, and also an EKG because of the EKG abnormalities. Um, any labs that's greater than, any lithium level that's greater than four puts a patient for severe toxicity, and this is when you might see the patient go on hemodialysis. Patient education should be on the use of diuretics with caution, educating them about what causes the increase and decrease of lithium levels. So in this slide, patient teaching on lithium should be on the use of diuretics. Diuretics, lithium, so lithium in this slide, lithium therapy. So in this slide, lithium education should, um, so education for patient teaching should be. So in this slide, so in this slide, I want you to, uh, in this slide, patient education would be on the use of diuretics and telling them to use it with caution because it affects lithium levels, right? Uh, educating patient what increases and decreases lithium levels. We went over the side effects, uh, teaching them about the side effects. For chronic treatment of patients on lithium, you're going to be monitoring every two months and then every six months. Mm, unless there is a signs of toxicity or compliance, not there unless there's unless they're non-compliant or there is signs of lithium toxicity or that you want to be changing the dose for some reason, you're going to be doing um, labs again. Talk about the sodium intake, especially when they're taking uh, with their diets, right? Especially with their diets, you want to talk about their sodium intake. You're going to um, teach the so now that we know the lab values to monitor for and the lithium side effects, what kind of education are we doing for the patient? We're going to teach them about use of diuretics and telling them to use it with caution. We're going to teach them about what lowers and increases lithium levels. We're also going to tell them if they're on lithium therapy that this is going to be routine lab work needed for lithium, right? So on a monthly basis, they're coming in for lithium levels or every six months, they're coming in for lithium levels. You're also going to be monitoring lithium levels for patients unless they're non-compliant, if you're changing doses, or if there is lithium toxicity, you're going to be monitoring lithium levels for these patients. You also want to educate the patient about sodium intake with their diets. So you might also want to talk to the patient about sodium intake with diets because lithium is very similar to sodium, works very similarly in the body, but has an inverse relationship, right? So when there is an increase in sodium, there's going to be decrease in lithium. When there is an increase in lithium, there's going to be a decrease in sodium levels, or it's going to be altered, if anything. Also know if the patient is decreasing sodium intake, know that the body is depleting the normal sodium and so the kidney is reabsorbing the lithium level and then puts the patient at increased risk for a lithium toxicity. So this is why it's important to do patient education on sodium intake with diets. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I would love to hear from you guys. So don't forget to comment below and let me know what your thoughts are. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye now.